Hey there, Minute Maintenance fans. It's Smith coming at you. I know it's been a minute since we put a video out there. I apologize for that. It's been a long, cold winter. Not very many vehicles to work on now that I live 40 miles away from town. You know, coming to town 80 miles both ways to go, and nobody wants to be able to bring the vehicles out there. Um, and the economy, people just can't afford the parts right now to get the vehicles worked on. But I got a bunch of projects lined up that me and Derek will be taking care of here. Today, we're working on one of my own vehicles. Everything's been running great on my end, so nothing catastrophic has happened or needed immediate attention. But today, we're going to work on the 2006 Ford Freestyle. Because I'm putting so many miles on all my vehicles, I'm doing a transmission filter and fluid change just to keep everything nice and vitalized and ready to roll. You don't want your transmission fluid getting old and thin, causes slippage, causes band damage, causes torque converter damage. You don't want any of that. So we're over. Hitting up, getting all the supplies from O'Reilly's Auto Parts Store, just my personal favorite auto parts store to go to because I always have everything I need on hand. Today I'm driving the 2007 Ford Expedition. Love this truck. This thing has been amazing. You guys saw me work on this thing uh, last year. I also did the spark plugs, the coil packs, no issue sense, transmission swap, filter swap on this thing, no issue sets. So this thing runs great, guys. Follow along. Plenty of videos out there, more content coming your way, but nothing to it but to do it. Let's get some wrenching done. Alright guys, we're back here out on the farm and before us we have a 2006 Ford Freestyle Station Wagon. Now this process for changing transmission fluid and filter, this will work for whichever model you have, whether it's the LE, the Limited, the LE, the SE, um, I think there's one other one out there. But this is a front wheel drive vehicle, and this particular one, there are all wheel drive ones, but this is going to be a similar process. What you're going to need is 7 quarts of CVT transmission fluid. Now this vehicle has a, a CVT style transmission, which stands for continuous variable transmission make sure you get the right fluid for the right type of transmission you have when you go to whatever auto parts store you're going to tell me make model year um sometimes they want like a certain number off the VIN number but they'll tell you what they need to know so that they can get you the right fluid for the right job i also i got seven quarts of that because it takes 10 quarts for the between the torque converter and what the filter is going to absorb that's going to cover between two two and a half to three quarts as well so i have seven quarts to replace all the fluid that i'm going to need um so that should be plenty it might only take six once we fill it up, we'll check the dipstick till we get the right amount we have. We don't want to overfill it. I also grabbed a bottle of Lucas Stop Slip. This stuff works very well as far as transmission fixing go. I always like to, on my higher mileage vehicles, this has over 150,000 miles on it. On any of my higher mileage vehicles, I like to do an abundance of caution, guys. I like to do everything I can to make it, remember, my vehicles last a little bit longer. It was $11 for a bottle of this. It was $15 for a bottle of this. I'm going to add this to it. It has special chemicals in there that have been proven in a lab somewhere from all the reviews I've read and from what I've read online to help. It's not going to fix it. If the transmission shot, transmission shot. But my transmission is running well, so this will hopefully just help prevent any issues down the road. What you're going to need is a 8 millimeter socket. There we go. 8 millimeter socket. And this is pretty much the only tool you really need to get this job done so we can drop the pan. 8 millimeter socket. I have an extension on there. If you're having a, a deep socket it's always good to have one of those as well because you never know certain angles and whatnot i have the filter itself that i'm going to use to, to swap out and i have this i want to show you guys this it's called an oil dry drop cloth this was an extra two dollars it was sitting there right next to the cashier register you can put this down underneath the transmission pan because you're going to get some transmission fluid on your driveway if you look back on one of my vehicles when i did the chrysler town of country at zero spillage you want to do that transmission pan on my expedition on this same channel i had a lot of spillage because the angle in my driveway i wasn't accounting for that fact and when i went to drop the pan it just went spilling everywhere and that was a power wash of a mess to try to get things cleaned up this will just help to prevent some of those small spillages and that's everything you need so step one in getting the transmission pan taken care of is jacking the vehicle up so underneath here i already have set up my hydraulic jack i like to go for a when i'm working on the transmission pan which is located right over here tapping it tap 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 i like to go for a center location for my jack as opposed to onto the side rear which is where you normally would jack it be carved you gonna like change a tire the reason for that is i want to try to keep everything level as opposed to going at a weird kitty wampus angle that way when i drop the pan i can more easily control which direction the fluid is going to start falling out so i can try to capture it all without making much of a mess so i went ahead and hooked onto a center location here on an engine mount at the bottom of the vehicle here which connects hard connects to the frame i didn't want to go where there was a bushing was put that extra stress on that one bolt and so forth so i went to something that was hard welded and we're jacked up now we're going to get over here and remove all the eight millimeter bolts from all around this transmission pan 
All right, now as you can see, I also have my oil pan here. Now I actually have two of these because seven quarts, guys, seven, eight quarts, that's a lot of transmission fluid. This is gonna start getting really close to the top. So just in case it starts, looks like it's gonna overflow. I have a second one of these catch pans on standby just in case. I went ahead and put my drop cloth down here to help to absorb any drippage. Now what I'm gonna do is take my socket wrench here and start removing get the angle right on the transmission pan here. This one actually has pretty decent access. Most transmission pans are a little harder to get to. Um, start removing all those bolts there. Let me get a light on for you guys. Whoop, whoop. All of those bolts on the side there. I'm going to start doing the ones that are on the back side going towards the rear tires. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have the front end jacked up, meaning the fluid is flowing this direction just due to the angle I have it jacked up. So hopefully, once I start loosening up these bolts, I can direct most of the fluid, lower the pan a little bit. You might have to loo I might have to loosen up some of these ones around here as well, just so I can get the back part of the pan to lower to start catching the majority of that fluid, and then we'll let that drain. So let's go ahead and get started. And this is something, guys, you do not need power tools for. An impact wrench would help speed the process up as far as removing the bolts, but this is something you can do by hand. Look at that. With a simple socket set now this is the socks i'm using this is actually my 30 piece harbor freight i think i spent like 15 dollars on it socket set that i keep in the trunk of all of my vehicles i've one in every they're so cheap i've one in every trunk of the vehicles that i own all seven of them just in case i run into any issues or i can help somebody on the side of the road because you never know i had the occasion oh, a couple days ago i didn't film it for you guys because i was in such a rush and you know filming things it tends to add at least another 30 if not 45 minutes of work time onto the mechanical process you know i enjoy doing it to help you guys out and i wish i would have had the time to film it but i was on my way to the to the gym and a young lady had called and she needed a new alternator and i used my little 30 piece socket set to get that job done on a side mount motor 2013 chrysler town of country <sighs> took me about three hours had i filmed it would have took four had i been home with all my big boy tools <laughs> it would have took me 45 minutes but that's neither here nor there things can be done you don't need all the fancy tools guys you can get things done by hand with limited tools all right, guys, just a little tip coming your way. When getting to one of these bolts, you got to come in from the back side. So I'm looking at the transmission pan here. And back there, my finger's pointing back there. That's the back of the vehicle. This will be the driver's tire. Okay, you come up on this side next to the CV shaft there. Okay, and you get your socket wrench in there with a short, without the extension, a short 8 millimeter socket. Then you're able to connect to the, one of those corner bolts over there. It gets a little tight with the depth of the pan. You can see how the pan itself has some ridges on it. It goes a bit of a ridge there, but to get to that one bolt, I couldn't go straight up like I'm able to go with the others because of the frame here bumping into the side of the pan. I couldn't get it. Maybe if you had some swivel sockets, you'd be okay, but I'm able just to reach in there sideways and attach right on that bolt and work it free from there. So that's not a problem. Just wanted to give you that little tip coming in from that particular side angle really helps out looks like from the bolts on and maybe these next few others coming up this way too all right guys river just started flowing on me so that one bolt that i had just shown you we had to come from the side angle on that that's the only one i've ran into any issues with so far as far as needing to do that everything else i've been able to just go straight up from the bottom up to them with and the last six or seven on the engine side of it because again i'm doing the back towards the rear wheel side of it. I'm doing that side first because that's the way my car is jacked up. Front end's jacked up, so the fluid pours out. So you see what I'm talking about? I'm directing the fluid back towards the rear wheels of the car. So I've got all those back bolts off on that side of the pan where the fluid's coming, and all of the ones coming up off this side, and all of them coming up on the other side. So the only ones left really are right there on that corner, on that corner there, and then this front side of the pan. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left. I'm gonna go ahead and let this drip, get the, the majority of that fluid out of there. And then we'll finish up these other few bolts, pull the pan itself. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Good stream coming out, I went ahead and pulled the last two corner bolts. So now I have only these five on this side, flat on this side, I pulled the last corner bolt there, last corner bolt there, which really allowed the pan to fully drop that way. And look at, that's why I keep an extra oil pan on standby, because look at that guy. She is almost plumb full. Golly gee willikers. Man. 
But now before I get after it, I'm just going to describe to you what I'm going to do next. I'm going to drop these last five bolts on this side, the same way we have been doing it. Pull these bolts. Now once these bolts, I'm on my last bolt, I'm going to keep one hand undoing the final bolt, the other hand trying to hold steady pressure on the bottom of the pan, basically pushing it up. And I'll gently guide it down because there will still be oh, an inch or so of fluid left in here. Okay, and I don't want all that to come crashing down. I don't want the pan to drop, fall in my bucket of fluid that I worked so hard to capture just to splash everywhere. Same thing with the filter that's not attached to the pan. It's attached to the engine itself. Be gentle when you pull the pan down. Don't go jostling around. You might knock that filter loose. Same thing, you might fall in, splash in your pan, splash in your catch there, and just make a real mess of day for you that's unneeded. Now, what I should have done is I should have removed the oil catch here before letting it get as full as it is, because honestly I got distracted otherwise I would've, because trying to move that now, as full as it is, I'm just gonna splash everywhere. So hopefully I can work around it without causing too much more headaches for myself. But I'm down to my last bolt, and see the pan's already lowered down even more. I got my last bolt, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna hold up on it and remove that final bolt by hand the rest of the way. So one's keeping positive pressure, and now it's already loosened. I can just finish it off here by hand. There we go. Wop, 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 wop. And this total job is probably taking me about 35, 45 minutes to get just the pan removed. Because you're taking your time, guys. This is an awkward angle to work. It'd be different if you have yourself a hydraulic lift and the car is overhead. It's a lot easier to work than laying on your back. This is really painful in that, guys. So make sure you have time in the day to be doing this type of stuff. This isn't a quick 20 minute job before work. So I got the last bolt out, I'm keeping positive control, and I'm gently trying to lower the pan down, minding my angles, trying not to catch the filter that's already hanging there. There we go, now I got the pan. I'm not tipping the pan, because there is still some fluid in there. I'm setting it off to the side, there we go. Now, I'm going to remove the filter with two hands and just simply pulls down on this. And she's out. I was back up here on the hood. Now, what I like to do is before putting transmission filters back in, because I, I have personally had the issues in the past where they sold me the right transmission filter and it wasn't. I didn't realize that it wasn't the right one until I'd already put, put everything back in there, bolted it back together, refilled the fluid, everything looked 95% correct. The issue was the spout either on one side or the other because this is it sucks up fluid from the bottom to pull in towards the top wasn't the right length and so it wasn't able to suck in any transmission fluid and when my car wouldn't go into gear and go anywhere I was in straight panic mode. So what I like to do is take out the new filter before I go any further and just visually 100% double check that there wasn't a factory mess up but the guy at the shelf didn't grab the wrong thing. I like to compare them side by side, length for length, and they look identical. Now your new filter is going to come with a new gasket on there, okay? The old one obviously didn't come out, so we got to go down there and we got to fish that out either with our finger or with a flathead screwdriver or a pick to try to drag it out of the spout hole that you pulled this thing out of. It's important to make sure you get all the old gasket off. Now the gasket came off for me, stuck to the pan, which is great. And by looking at it, I can tell I have the full session. There's no missing chunks or anything. It's one full piece. Okay, the new filter came with the new gasket. So we will throw that guy away. Whoop. And we'll use the new one as well. And I'll show you what I like to do to keep the gasket attached to the pan while I'm install installing the bolts. But right now, let's get back underneath that engine and fish out that gasket off the filter. All right, guys. And this is the underside of the transmission here. With the pan and filter set, the filter set right up there to that orange ring. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver and reach up in there. Sometimes you can just reach up in there with your finger and try to fish it out. It's going to be difficult for me to uh, film that. But if you can't, you can use like a, a pick. They make special tool picks that you can buy that are good for all sorts of things. Or you can use a flathead screwdriver. All right, guys. I was able to get it off. I tossed it in the pan here. Oh, I was able to get it off. If it was a struggle. It was a struggle. If the screwdriver, if the pick trick doesn't work, that's why you want to use something that doesn't gouge. You can reuse it. If it's, if it's stuck in there, if the old one's stuck in there, and you're looking at it, the way I showed you on the camera, looked at it, everything looked solid, and the new filter attaches to it, 
you can reuse it. I've, I've done it before. I've seen it done before. It it's better not to reuse gaskets and seals for sure. But that one, that one, I would be comfortable reusing. Had I not been able to get, I just spent like the last twenty five minutes trying to get that sucker out of there. I was uh, about to give up and finally came out. It sucks. Please drop a comment if you guys have any tips or tricks on the ways you found to get those things out of there easier. Because some of them just come out with the filter. Some of them. They put you on the struggle bus like this one did for me today. So after that, after you get that done, you take the new filter and you shove it up in there. And just like that, the new filter is in, in the same orientation it was before. Just take that long spout and just shove it back up in that hole. Push as firmly as you can. And in some vehicles, guys, in some vehicles, it will dangle a little bit. It uses, it dangles a little bit and uses the pressure from the bottom of the pan pushing back up to hold it in place. I've seen that before. Um, that's annoying. And you, sometimes you're looking at it and you're like, oh, that's going to fall out. That's, that's not doing it right sometimes that's just how they sit in there. This one was thankfully just able to sit up in there nice and firm. So I know she's in there. So now we're going to work on taking a rag, wiping off all the exterior here of the pan, just to make sure there's no debris or anything. Just give it a nice little wipe down, make sure it's clear of any debris. Same thing with the pan itself. We're going to clean off the magnet that's inside the pan that collects any ceramic and metal debris from the transmission's uh, gears grinding as, I mean, it's metal. It's going to do its thing, it's gonna wear off, so catch those wear stuff, and then we'll get the pan reinstalled. All right, guys, I went ahead and I took a rag. Stop bouncing. I went ahead and took a rag and I wiped down the outside of the pan here. There's a little bit of fluid left in there, I'll dump that out in my gravel before I reinstall the pan. Right here, this section here, see I just wiped that sludge off? That's all ceramic and metal debris from the, that's perfectly natural, that's why they put this magnet in here. It's actually removable, so you can wipe it down better, easier. As I was saying, geez, I suck, two hands. You're able to remove that, wipe it off as cleanly as you can, wipe off the area around it. And as you can see, I've gotten gotten some leaves and debris in here just from the pan being out. You're going to go ahead and wipe everything down on the inside. You don't want anything left inside that's going to contaminate your transmission. Wipe down the magnet, wipe down and put back in place. What I like to do, a trip that I like to use, guys, is zip ties when it comes to holding a gasket in place. Now, I bought this 650 piece of zip ties from Harbor Freight for like $5. So, I mean... There, I got almost a thousand zip ties for five dollars. What the heck do I care? Now your gasket is going to match the shape of your pan, so do what you can, work it around, make sure it actually matches up. You get the proper shape. That everything lines up, the holes line up, that everything is perfection at its best. Boom! There we go. All right. Once you got it somewhat oriented the way you want it to be, these things do not sit in there very well. So what I like to do is I like to take some zip ties. It doesn't really matter what size, zip ties. And I like to zip tie the gasket in place loosely. Keyword is loosely. That way, I'll show you. Not too tight. Just bring it in here. Zip tie so that the head of it is on the outside of the pan there, not on the inside. Just like a little tighter than that. Just like that. And I'll do that about three, four more times around the pan so that the gasket's held in place. Then I'll go through and start threading in the bolts that aren't zip tied all along here because that's gonna the bolts going through the non-zip tied parts can help hold the gasket in place against the transmission at that point. Then I can just go ahead and cut the zip ties. And if as long as the head's on the outside, once you cut it, then you can just pull it all out. It's not gonna cause any issues for you. Stick the bolts in. You're good to go. All right, guys, we got our pan fully bolted back in. And they sit down there and cut those zip ties off along the way and restuck the bolts in the blonde there. Now we're up to the hood part. Now what you're going to want to do is pull off your mass airflow sensor here, which is this red tab. See that? It just slides up. Just get your fingernail underneath there if you got strong nails. If not, just a, gently underneath this lip here, the flathead screwdriver, just to pry it up gently underneath there, just like that. Then there's this little black button back there that you push in. Then the whole thing comes out. Clip one, clip two on the air box. We gotta get this out of our way so that we can have access to our transmission dipstick area. Dipstick's right here, I'd taken out earlier, but dipstick sits right in that tube. I was just showing you how that box comes out because after I start doing this, I'm like, oh, I gotta show them how to take that box out. So dipstick sits down in here, but you pull her out. And you can fill it one of two ways. You can fill it straight through the dipstick tube here or this bolt right here, which is just a half inch ratchet 
extension, you put it on there, you twist that bolt off, you can fill it in a little bit faster. If this is seized up, that's okay, just go through here. But if you're able to get that off, it just makes filling up transmission fluid a lot easier. All right, and now we slowly but surely got our funnel in there. And again, I went through that hole as opposed to the actual shaft itself just because it makes filling a lot faster. And slowly but surely, start filling it up with the proper transmission fluid. This transmission takes the CVT. I'm going full synthetic. Continuous variable transmission fluid. All right, it's gonna take about at minimum six quarts, I got seven, and then we'll add that Lucas transmission fix just because this is a higher mileage vehicle. All right, guys, I want to say a quick thank you to all the subscribers out there. There's a lot more subscribers than we ever thought we were going to get, a lot more views on a lot of our videos than we ever thought we were going to get. We appreciate you guys. Again, Derek used to do this professionally. I've never done this professionally. I just, I like wrenching on my own stuff. There's a sense of accomplishment and satisfaction that comes from that. We appreciate all the comments, even the negative ones. We appreciate the questions. If you guys know any shortcuts, any tips or tricks that you guys have found, please drop a line, make a comment below. We'll highlight those on the channel because we're trying to help people save money, save time, and get things done on their own. You don't always have to go to a mechanic. Things sound daunting. This is a $500 job that cost me $140 worth of supplies. And we're up to about an hour and a half of my own time, two hours by the time everything's said and done, two and a half hours with a shower. Not a bad way to spend an afternoon. I'd much rather save the over $400 I'm saving and do it myself and teach you guys along the way some shortcuts that I found to make the jobs a lot easier. Pro tip for you, if you're gonna work outside your garage, make sure you check the weather forecast first. I just get caught in some pretty torrential downfall, rainfall. Thankfully, I got everything finished up here. Now it's just buttoning everything back up. It's putting the air filter back together. But that's it, guys. Basically, drop eight millimeter bolt, drop all the pans, remove the filter, remove the old seal, put the new seal on the filter, filter in, gasket. You guys saw what to do. It's a pretty simple process that anybody can do it. 500 bucks at the shop, $140 worth of parts at home. You do the math. Much better to do it at home. Guys, check the weather beforehand so it don't end up uh, in a wet t-shirt contest like me. I'm going to get everything cleaned up. I'm going to take a much needed shower. And uh, guys, we're back. We've got some more content coming your way. Like, subscribe, drop any comments, questions below. And as always, guys, find a minute out of your day to do some maintenance. We'll catch you next time.